Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. A little bit late in the day, so I'll stick with water for right now. What's the topic going to be today? In the last video, we made horseshoe coat rack hangers or cord hangers for your garage. These are the ones that I make. They're the ones that I sell. And then I had a friend see these and he goes, hey, he goes, any chance you can make me one of those cowboy looking things like that hot dog cooker, but instead of the cooker, you know, can you make it so it's got like a ring in one hand and maybe like a gun or something in the other and make it look, you know, kind of cool for my shop and I can use it to set like a ratchet in or a tool or something like that. And yeah, I mean, sure. And uh, today's my day off. So I figured, okay, and I'll make a tutorial on it. I mean, why not? So I'm going to go ahead and get set up. I'll pan down and we'll get right into the project. So give me a few minutes. I'll be right with you. Oh, one more thing before I go, I have a mail call today, and what did I get? I've been tabling for a while the idea of buying a camcorder for travel. Instead of lugging around, you know, my camera pack with my DSLR and all the equipment and all that stuff, and, you know, you got to drape it around your neck, and i got to go through all this stuff, and it's a great camera. It works good. That's what I'm using now. I thought I'd really like to get a camcorder, you know, just for traveling, so I didn't really want to spend the money. A lot of them look pretty expensive. I read a lot of reviews, did all this stuff. I came across a really good deal on a website and I'll post all this stuff later in a review of the camera if it works out. But I got the Canon uh, Vixia, the DSL, or I'm sorry, the Canon Vixia 57 times zoom, I guess, HFR800. I don't know a lot about these cameras, these camcorders, but I'm going to find out. What I did know is what a lot of people complained about is the inability of wide angle. So on Amazon, I ran across another good deal that I'll try and I'll give you the information where I bought, you know, you get two for the price of one kind of a thing, whatever, and the ring adapter and all that. This is a wide angle lens. It's a 0.43 times high definition wide angle lens. The other one that came in the package here, well, let's see, what is it? It's 2.2 high definition telephoto lens. So I'll try these, I'll do a review on them if I like the stuff and let you know if I recommend it. But I'm gonna do part of the video with that camcorder because I just wanna try it out. So I'll let you know what part it is and then if it turns out, you know, like I said, I'll do a product review. But today we're gonna talk about making that cowboy tool holder thing. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and be with you in a second. I got to get everything set up and ready so that we don't make it an incredibly long video. So I'll be right back. All right, first thing I'm going to do, I got all the horseshoes and stuff all spread out, is I need two good horseshoes. I got this one here for the base, and I'm going to set this one just like this. And those little nail holes that are in the horseshoe make a good alignment tool, really, for the other one that you're going to put here for the body. I'm going to pan around with the camera in a minute and show you a different angle, but I'm going to take my magnets, the Harbor Freight ones, and I'm just going to set them up on here like this. Something like this. There we go. Just like this, and it's going to hold it, and I can actually just tweak it a little bit how I want. Now, it's going to hold it in place nice and straight thereabouts. I mean, pretty much just the way I want it. <coughs> now, I haven't hit these with a wire wheel yet, so I've picked out my horseshoes that I'm going to use, and I'm going to cut some of these up. I'm going to stop the video for a minute. I'm going to use the wire wheel on my bench grinder. I'm going to clean these up, which is another way of like weld prepping, unless you want to use your four and a half inch angle grinder or some other file or something else. I'm going to use that. It cleans them up, makes them look better. I'll be right back and I'll fire up the welder and we'll start to continue with this. All right, I like to get everything ready first. So I got the horseshoes all cleaned up. A pile of them laying here and I've got them cut in half and I got my little piece of sheet metal. Like I said, I cut it in the teardrop. I drilled a big hole in it and why did I do that? Well, if I set it on the part that's his body in a little while, say this is the body part, and I set that on here, it gives me a nice big area and a hole to really create a strong weld. It's just the way I do it. Here's the pounding tool with the pieces of pipe. 
showed you in the past video how I make that. I use a piece of rectangular steel on a piece of plate steel. That way it fits in my vise. I tighten it. I've got these two here because I can actually put a horseshoe or something, another piece of pipe in there or a piece of steel and I can bend it. So these two right here with the big one, they're meant for bending. I like this up here. It's a multi-purpose little tool I made because I can hold this with a pair of pliers and then use a ball pane hammer and you start beating it around until you get it shaped the way that you want. If it doesn't come out shaped the way that you want, you can put it over like this and pound it back down flat and then do it again. So I just simply go around it like this. It won't take long and you start to get that nice envelope or that U shape going on here and this is how you do it. And then we're going to fish around and we're going to find a bolt to put here to make like a hat. We'll do that in a few minutes. I'm just getting everything ready. I'll be right back. All right, we're set up and ready to weld. I got my ground clamp. I got my ground clamp in place. So now these horseshoes over here and figure out how, you know, I'm going to do this. Let me get over this way a little bit. All right, so we'll figure out how we're going to do this about like that. That's a good start. Okay, so get one of these Harbor Freight magnets position it just how I want. Now the nice thing like I said about the nail holes in these horseshoes is you can use them to help create that alignment that you want. Fire up the MIG welder. That's it for that. Now, got to have his body coming up. Let's see if I can turn this to show you. about right there using that third hand magnet. That'll work so I'm going to tack it. Or maybe a little more than a tack. But there it is. We'll clean it up in a bit if I got a little too much. Okay, now we got to do the arms. I'm going to set him back up against here like this on this magnet. It'll hold it nice and straight for me. Okay, now I'm going to set it back here on this magnet. It's going to hold it nice and straight for me. Now we've got to play around with the arms. I've got a couple of them here. Okay, so uh, I forgot to turn the camera back on in time. All I did is I put a piece of sheet metal hat right here and I welded it right here. It's still real hot. Just took about two seconds of MIG welding. 
All right, now we'll put this hat on there, the little dome of the hat, and let's weld that in. What you do at this point is you're just playing around with that MIG welder, you're just creating a circle inside of that nut. And you just keep bringing it up till you get it more or less the way that you want it. And that's not bad right there. I'm going to leave it alone just for the sake of the video and because it looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and cool this off again. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I put that ring right up here. And I want to tilt it down a little bit, so I'm going to have to hold it a little bit with that magnet. I mean, to get it the way that I want. So, what we're going to do, even though the magnets helped me, I didn't want to fiddle around with them that long. So I thought, well, let's just weld it in there. That's just about a tack weld, maybe a little bit better than a tack weld to hold it on. So we got that done. Now, there's the tool holder part of what he wants. Now I have not welded this thing all up yet. I'm just tacking it. If I need to knock it apart anywhere, I can. But for right now, it's okay. I have to figure out how to do the gun part. Uh, give me a few minutes to think about this and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is I took an old wrench, you'll see it on top of the magnet, and I cut a little piece off of it. Then down where those vice grips are, let me see if I can zoom in. Now, I am. Zoomed in as much as I can. I put that there for like the handle of a pistol, and I use quarter inch hot rolled steel. Okay, folks, <clears throat> well, we got it done. Here it is right here. Turn it a little bit. It's got the gun in the hand, it's got the ring over here, you can use it for some kind of a tool holder, let's see, on a workbench if you secure it, the workbench you can use it to hold a hammer, a little wobbly here, you can put a wrench or whatever you want in here, but this is a quick and easy way to do it, you can uh, wipe this with acetone, use textured paint, shoot it with semi-gloss, the only thing left that I need to do now is I need to hit the inside lip here with one of those Harbor Freight files, which is right here. I just go around on the inside and it takes off that sharp edge. <laughs> the other thing is, I clean it up right here with that uh, flap wheel. That's about it. There's not a whole lot to it. He's got his six gun out that we made here. Shaped his hand around it, played around. So we had a pretty good time, pretty good project, it didn't take long to do. So let's go to questions and answers real quick and uh, see if we can wrap this up. What MIG wire did I use? 030. And I used a cutoff wheel, I used a flap disc, I used a Harbor Freight file. We go around, we touch everything up, wipe it down with acetone, shoot it with just, I use Rust-Oleum uh, Ultra three times clear. Uh, that way they don't get gook and rust and grime on them, I mean afterwards, and uh, because it's a shop tool, I won't do anything like that. I don't know if he will, but you can finish these lots of different ways, so anyway. Okay, folks, now I'm using the Canon Vixia to wrap this up, and I wanted to show you here's some other possibilities that you are able to do with horseshoes. You have the hot dog cooker. We already did a tutorial on that. You have the tool holder, which we did today. Over here, this is a heart shape. This one's more hard to do because you have to have a way to heat it up. This right here is like a boot pick. It's just made out of a horseshoe and you can see how it's bent, twisted, and ground into a point here. We used to make quite a few of these and sell them like when they had horse shows and stuff like that, but I just do it online now. But these are other possibilities of quick and easy things for you to make once you get behind the learning curve. Something to consider. 
Anyway, that's your uh, quick tutorial today. I hope you folks enjoyed it. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think uh, and what else you want to see. I mean, we can always play around, do other things that could be sold. This popped up. I don't think I've ever done a video on this. I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. I hope you keep following me, and I will see you soon on the next video. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye. Okay, so what else can you do? Um, I was going to conclude the video, but let me explain what else you could do if you wanted to. <clears throat> you got the hot dog cooker. We've already done a tutorial on that. You got this one today, the tool holder. Here's a cowboy uh, kind of shoe pick, boot pick, just made out of a horseshoe. That's all it is. You have to have a way to heat it up, bend, but then you can shape it easy enough and using the four and a half inch angle grinder you can actually bring this to a point like this, so not hard to do. Here's something real complicated to do now. You can make this heart and these two horse heads. You're going to have to have a forge or some way to heat it up in order to do this, but these things are possible too. Okay folks, thank you very much.